In this video, we're going to go over the RNAV runway 20 in Burley, Idaho. At the moment, we, are, we have the simulator position uh, abeam the airport 7,000 feet, and we're going to go over how to load it, check it, brief it. Like always in these videos, keep it in mind, these videos are for educational and recreational use only. Uh, you still need to seek uh, instruction from a certified flight instructor. This does not replace that instruction. Okay, so like I said, at the moment, we're just up in Burley, uh, heading autopilot, yaw damp altitude 7,000 is what the autopilot's program for. The, like every approach, we have, like, like I said in the intro, we're gonna load it, check it, brief it. Um, we're gonna start by loading on the MFD. I'm gonna press the procedure, select approach. Burley's already in there. Notice that it's gonna give me RNAV runway to zero LNAV VNAV. Um, this approach, and we, when we look at the approach plate, we only have LNAV minimums. That vertical navigation can be used, but it is guidance and you have to monitor. You cannot just trust what the vertical guidance because the approach that we are actually flying is certified only for LNAV only. Uh, so I'm going to select RNAV GPS. If we're assuming that we're coming on the missed approach, um, the missed approach instruction says climb left turn 7,000 direct India Romeo Echo Mike Echo. So I am going to select that as the initial approach fix. That way it will give us the course reversal we need to fly this approach. Minimums. This is going to be a lot of twisting knobs. Oh, there we go. 4,546. The, this airport is in South Dakota, so it's always cold. Um, I'll take a look really quickly at the notes as far as when does the, uh, if they have an altitude compensation chart, which I don't see it for this approach. They usually will be located on the notes. Cool. So now I'll keep on spinning, and that will be the 4,560 feet for the MDA. Because I don't have a flight plan, it's not giving me the option to load, so it's gonna activate right away. So at the moment, it has us going to air me. I personally, let me change this. I'm gonna go back to the map. I'm gonna press menu, settings. I'm not a heading up person. I personally, I'm a north up person. Um, now that we load the approach, we're gonna check it. We're doing air me 7,000. We're going to hold. It's a seven mile hold. The final approach fix is a 6,000 for um, Hotel India Kilo Lima Oscar 6,000. We do have that jam in at 4,800. And this is a 3.75 degree decent angle. We're going to see how the G1000, that vertical guidance it was providing. I'm going to see, I'm going to do my mental math. Uh, I will talk about how to do that mental math as we fly the approach for the decent planning. But at the moment, it's showing 3.75, so it's steeper than normal. Uh, then normal. Normal is three degree angle of descent. Uh, missed approach is runway to zero. And then it's a left turn, direct there, me at hold seven miles on the seven, uh, two, zero, six. The chart shows two, zero, three. It's still good. It's still plus or minus is in the right direction, we're gonna fly the 206 on the approach. Uh, now that we have loaded the approach, we have checked it. One last thing I'll do is I'll actually take a look at the NOTAMs. Uh, and you see, this is why you, it's crucial that you check the NOTAMs. Ideally, you wanna do them on your pre-flight. Uh, if you're en route, start looking at them. You make sure you have the information available to you. You downloaded all the charts and packages. Um, because now it has a climbing left turn to 7,000 direct derby and hold and continue holding. Um, so the deleted node distance measuring equipment. So they deleted a couple notes in there. We're more than likely going to be just landing after this approach. Cool. Now let's go ahead and brief it and make sure it's, you guys can see this. Uh, this is, we're doing the RNAV GPS runway to zero. Checks in Burley, 12-1, uh, effective February 4, 2022. I haven't set up my frequencies. I, I never do it. I, once again, I never go over frequencies. 
for for the approach briefing. The only reason I'm going to set them up is for the video, uh, because this should have been done well before. There we go. How about that? There's the ATIS 21.5 is emergency frequency that comes on. We can assume that we're talking with Twin Falls on 26.7. And the tower is going to be the Unicom 22.9. Okay. Once again, approach frequencies. Frequencies are not part of the brief. It's just for sequencing only for the video. We're doing the RNAP final approach course is zero to zero. We have zero to five on the database. That's still good. Remember, the simulator uses the same database as the airplane does. Hotel India Kilo Lima Oscar is going to be crossed at seven at six thousand. MDA is forty five sixty. Uh, and then we do have the conditional, right? Is if we have the local altimeter versus the twin false altimeter. We're going to assume that we have the local altimeter because that's why we do have the weather for it. Uh, touch sensor elevation is 4,152. We have the approach lighting system inside. We can descend to 100 feet above touch sensor elevation, which is going to be 4,252. Uh, threats, the, there is a tower 4,304 feet right on the approach end, and that is what this 4,800 is calling for. So we're going to be crossing that tower 300 feet above that tower. So we got to comply with that 4,800. Um, what else do we have in here? I don't see any other threats. Uh, there is mountains on the southeast uh, end of the airport. And the highest obstacle is that 5,773 feet. Uh, all the way in the northwest of the chart. Uh, two miles prior, we're going to start configuring. Uh, one thing I do, uh, I, I've never flown a caravan in real life. I only have flown in the simulator. Uh, generally, clients who come here with a caravan and they want to fly, they bring their own manuals and we follow their procedures. So I'm going to be being very generic on the uh, 208 configuration. Is going to be, We're going to treat it just like a uh, big uh, caravan, actually like a big Cessna Skyhawk, Skylane, whatever you want, it's going to be, it's just a Cessna, it actually is a very uh, stable airplane. So two miles from the final approach fix, we're going to configure for landing. Um, this case, we're going to be setting flaps 10. We're going to set up flaps 10, 10 degree, uh, uh, flaps 10, two miles, and we're going to run through our before landing checklist. Uh, but up descending down to 4,560, which is minimums, which I already said it. In case we have to go miss, it's going to be uh, condi fuel condition lever full forward, perhaps full forward throttle set to the bug, pitch the nose up 10 degrees, pass stoga, then select nav. Uh, we're going to be, it's going to be a left turn. So once we're above 400 feet, we're going to be making a left turn. Notice 400 feet above the AGL, 4,554, the G1000 sets that number in there for us because that's the earliest we can turn. And then we'll come back around, we'll hold, and we'll let Twin Falls know that we went missed. And then we'll always send a briefing with any questions. So I personally don't have any questions. Uh, so let's get flying. I'll stabilize the simulator, make sure. And I'm going to select NAV, that way we can start tracking the airmen. We have 10 miles. I'm personally, I'm not a big fan of those boxes. Uh, the way to turn them off, I'm going to press PFD options, synthetic vision, and you take those pathways out. That's the way to do that. So GPS, autopilot, Yodam, 7,000, altitude 7,000 is what we're flying. Um, we can assume ATC gave us the clearance. Cross air me at or above 7,000, we are clear for the approach. So I'm going to arm the approach mode, and we see the glide path is on white. And that indicates that it's on standby. It's, it's, it's going to be arm, um, as many uh, many pilots may be familiar. Um, other thing, and this is an NXI feature. It has this little map. Um, we here. I'll do. I'll change the. Uh, no. PFD options. I'm going to set the altimeter to 992 for the simulator. I'm going to press back. And I want to get rid of that HSI map. I, I personally don't like it. HSI map off. I like the CDI. 
Um, I see many cases, the pilots get distracted. So I'm going to watch this because you see how the autopilot's going up a few hundred feet. Let me pull the power back, vertical speed. Let me see, and I'll keep on a very close eye on this autopilot uh, as we do in this. So uh, many people get distracted with the map. I'm not a big fan. That's why I'm turning it off. I know what I wanted to do before transponder. How about we set a code uh, 2022 and transponder. How about we put it on altitude? There it is. Altitude select 7,000. Now, because the final approach fix is 6,000, I can arm it. I'm going to wait for the VNAV. VNAV is going to be coming active in 1 minute and 24 seconds. As it's telling us that we're 1,000 feet off. 4 miles. Flaps 10 on the caravan is 175, flaps 20 is 150. Um, I have a little bit of time. Let me go in here. I normally organize my charts are a little bit different. Uh, this is 4,000 foot runway. I'm not a caravan pilot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I actually, I'm going to set on the two mile prior to the final approach fix, I'm going to set flaps 20. And the consideration for uh, uh, increasing the flaps is only a 4,000 foot runway. is not mega long. While the caravan has the performance, it's still, a, I wouldn't say a short runway, but we're, the altitude at this airport is 4,100. So I will take into consideration we're landing high. Uh, so flaps 20 won't hurt us. One mile from the initial approach fix. This VNAB on, uh, unavailable, we'll keep an eye on it. And it's actually, this is what he did. It actually never let us down to 6,000 um, here. And the top of descent went away. So I'll keep an eye on it. We should be turning left about 30 degrees. I'll zoom in on the MFD. At some point, because we're clear for the approach, we will switch over to CTAF and we'll get, make a call. Uh, We'll call, we'll call CTAP and let them know where we are in the approach. So it could be uh, Burley, Traffic, Caravan, 106 here at Tango, Cross Theremia at 7000, due in the RNAV runway 20, Burley Traffic. So because we're already on this hold, this is a seven mile hold. This is pretty long. I'm actually going to wait until we start in doing that turn before I start my descent at 6000. Alerts. VNAV is unavailable, so it didn't give us the VNAV, didn't give us the profile, which is fine. I'll get rid of that flash. My outside temperature is minus 4 degrees. I already have the PDOT heat and any ice equipment on. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set... Uh, PFD options, bearing one, I'm going to set an F1. Bearing two is going to GPS. There, we're coming up on five miles, two more miles. We're still going to make the right turn. And we're going to still going to go inbound for seven miles. What I'm going to try to do, I'm, let me, I'm going to accelerate the simulator here. That way we're not watching paint dry. Let me go six miles. I'm going to start slowing it down. Back to normal speed. We can expect a right turn. Hear me, we're going to cross it at 7,000. It's very easy to make the mistake. Uh, if we go to hear me at seven, and start that descent because the next Vena altitude is six. That is the reason why I went back to seven because I did cut that mistake. Um, so all it is is we'll keep it seven and because it's such a long distance, then we we'll go down to six. I would also switch over to uh, Unicom in uh, Burley. 
Uh, Burley traffic, Karen, one zero six zero Tango, Arnav runway two zero on the hold inbound. Burley traffic. I'll check the alert. I'll get rid of the flight plan, get rid of the flash. I'll speed up the simulator again. GPS autopilot, Yodamp altitude 7000. Here we go with three miles. I'll speed it up just a bit more. And coming out of quantum speed, going back to just normal speed from here on out. I'm not expecting the VNAV to work because it already gave us the alert, right? And then it's only a thousand feet. So one sixth divided by two is 80 times 10, or I see we're at the end, that's 800 feet. And that's gonna be the decent rate for this altitude. Now, uh, the other option we have here is we can actually go down now, or we can stay here and intercept the glide path from up here. Personally, I'm actually going to stay here at 7, intercept the glide path early, and then do as one smooth descent. The flaps 10 speed for the caravan is 175. We're well inside. So I'm going to wait until glide path alive. The CDI is going to GPS LNAV VNAV. Remember, we're going to be very cautious on this decent angle because it's calling for 3.75. So I'm treating that glide path with a grain of salt. I'm going to make my power reduction glide path. I'm going to set 10 degrees of flaps. And remember, Early on, I may have mentioned about, I, I am going to set flaps 20. So this is a 4,000-foot runway. Um, in a caravan, the caravan has the performance. I'm, going to, I'm not a caravan pilot, so I'm going to use flaps 20 because I think it, it won't hurt anything. And we got to be inside 150, flaps 20, landing checklist, gas, under carriage, mixtures, prop. I'm going to set 7,000 for the missed approach altitude. Ground speed is 140 divided by 2. That will be 700. So time, and times 10 or at a zero, that's 700 feet a minute. Notice that the glide path is keeping up. I set missed approach altitude. I am keeping an eye on this Jamit at 4,800. And we have 2.5 miles. That's the one Three, a thousand feet requires three miles, so we are going to be within profile for the, the three degree angle. And because we're in a steeper angle, decent, I think we're going to be able to make that restriction. Jamit is 1.8, 4,800. You may be able to see some ground coverage. I'm actually just looking pretty much at the instruments, I'm ignoring what's going on outside at this point. 5,200, one mile for 8,800. I'm going to hover my finger around this jamet uh, because I don't know if it's going to make it or not. I'm going to start reducing my power as well. I'm going to start getting into 110 knots. 4,800 jamet. It actually did clear it. Now we're descending to minimums, 300 minimums. Two hundred, one hundred, approaching minimums, and I'm actually going to pause the simulator here. So we approach minimums, and this is one takeaway. Uh, and let me see if I can get it done here. Notice the flight path angle. 
Flight Path Angle pretty much stayed always at the beginning of that runway. So the synthetic vision does have great tools to keep you on profile. Now, granted, this approach and real IMC getting bounced around icing conditions is a whole different level uh, of what's going on. Here is just about the procedure. What is the G1000? What are we seeing on the approach plate and what can we plan for? Um, and here is just the, 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 the flight path angle, the flight path vector that, that donut was always aiming at the end of, at the beginning of the runway at the touchdown. So that gives you a, a, a view on what could expect it. However, minimums are minimums. That situation awareness as a tool that if you have the workload capability, it works for you. However, minimums are minimums, visual conditions, you have to be able, still be able to see the runway. So Notice that the Jamit also, I want to point out, Jamit does not, it's not an altitude that is going to get honored. And even in real life, I'll be very cautious with that VNAV because this is an LNAV only. In this case, the VNAV did manage to follow the 3.75 degree, uh, but it may not. It may be different. I seen it being off. Um, when I'm flying GA airplanes, depending on the database of the G1000 variables, they're kind of well above my knowledge uh, or time to, go for, to, to, to start researching. However, if you have VNAV, use it. Just you have to be on top of that system. We have other approaches for other airports. Uh, take a look at them because they're going to have each approach. Each video is going to have a little different explanation, a little bit something different. What makes that approach particular? Uh, or interesting for that matter. If you, if you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel.